everyone. You're back. Oh, yes. And so are we. To the Is This Love podcast. This is that little show where we ride the waves and <laughs> swim through the weird and wonderful ocean of love and relationships. <laughs> I'm your big kahuna, Francis, a.k.a. the oh other God. guy. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> and our goddess of the ocean, right over there, it's Miss Sarah Need. Hey, Sarah. Oh, hi. <laughs> Wearing her panted coconut bra tonight. Oh, my God. I no. never understood that. That's got to be painful, right? The co- Yeah, that sounds really painful. Like... <laughs> I understand that the women of Hawaii who wear them are not particularly busty. So therefore it may not hurt them as much, but I can't imagine like you can't hollow those things enough to, cause they're still hard round pieces of fruit. They're kind of like one size fits all yeah. bra. Yeah. I would say, how about a seaweed bra? That sounds nice. Seaweed bra is good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I, you already do it for the skirt. Might as well. I guess it's, it's not seaweed, but it's um palm leaves. I guess right. Yeah, it's like kind of some sort of or some sort of grass. Oh, grass of some grass. kind. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I guess if you're wearing a coconut bra, it just depends on if it's the right size for you. But to me, it sounds very painful for Have me. Have you ever watched the hula dancers in the coconut bras while you're in Hawaii? I don't know that I saw coconut bras. I think they had um, a different kind of top, but yeah, man, they're amazing. Yeah, no, they're fantastic. So yeah. good. And the flame, the flame dancers and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They're all amazing. I just, uh, man, they just practice all the time. I think my favorite thing, because I went to Hawaii for a job interview a few years ago and I was like, man, I need to eat. I landed in Hawaii at 10 o'clock at night. I'm hungry. I need to eat something. I go into their 7-Eleven, and they have real meals and real food. I'm like, oh, it's like Japan. It was before, I had this before I went to Japan, so I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Then I realized, oh, even in Japan, like, it's like where you get your, yeah. your meals. But, so, yeah, I didn't know that about 7-Elevens in Hawaii. They're like, hey, here's your, your loco moco in your seven, local 7-Eleven. Oh, that's like, cool. Oh, that, yeah, it is. I love it. You're, we always go to Foodland when we're in Hawaii. Always Foodland? I, don't, I like the name of that. Yeah, it's a great grocery store. Oh. Um, I don't know. They're around. Uh, they have um, really good mochi in the just sort of like near the uh, sort of like deli section. Yeah. Well, when you say food land, I think, oh, it's like Hershey land. It's like an amusement park <laughs> where they just celebrate food in Hawaii. Um, have you ever? It's just a grocery store. Oh, okay. Never mind then. I thought it was something. And have you been to the Dole factory or the Dole? Is it the factory or what is it? The, the Dole plantation in Hawaii? We had been to a pineapple farm like a long time ago, but I think it's gone now. Farm. Yeah, it's too bad. Yeah, because Dole has a, a a plantation there, or a, the the what do you call it? Coconut or coconut uh, pineapple like stuff there, and they have like a, a a maze. They have like a like not a corn maze. It's like a pineapple maze or whatever. Oh, yeah, cool. It's kinda, yeah, it's cool. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, I was, I was just curious because I know you. That's a a, a a spot you like, right? That's a place I like to go to. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah and I do really love all the like. Um, the, like you're saying, the dam- dancing and performing arts that um, that people do. Uh, I had a, a coworker who was from Hawaii, and she she learned that dancing. She practiced that for many many years and did lots of competitions and stuff. And she showed us some of her videos. God, it's just she was very talented. I'm <laughs> well, <laughs> I definitely don't have those moves at all. <laughs> it's, it's the ability to leave the top half of your body still while the bottom half of your hips just go back I and forth know. in a very rhythmic motion. And I'm like, it's like hypnotizing. Yeah. Uh, oh man. I don't know. Why, uh, well, I, anyway, hi everyone. 
Uh, this show is not about Hawaii. <laughs> uh, we just happen to start talking about it because I like to let you in on our little world as people. You, know, you get to know us as individuals and our likes and our dislikes and see if we are worthy of providing you with some advice in the realms of love and relationships. And we have some questions in the current is this love questions <laughs> segment beautiful well it, it, that's the that's the uh what do you call it? the um the placeholder until oh we get the... <laughs> it's not gonna be your oh, voice oh no 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 when we get <laughs> sarah oh okay intro well then you guys are missing out i don't know about I was that gonna say you get two old, you got two <laughs> episodes of it two no all right <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, you're so funny. All right, what do we got here? What do we got? <laughs> okay. I asked a girl out and we had a great first date. I told her I'd love to meet again and she didn't really answer, but changed the subject and we continued the date. At the end, I asked her when she'd like to meet again. She said she didn't know, she's busy for a couple weeks and didn't give me any available times. I could meet with her in the next couple days, but then I'm going to be out of town for or until next week. Should I try to ask her again and secure a date before I leave? Am I being too persistent? Oh, boy. Persistent. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, I always have a weird story to go with these things. You have a lot of stories for these, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've, I'm desperate for love. Um, there was a... <laughs> Experience. <laughs> there... There was uh, there was this one girl who I was interested in. I think she was interested as well. Uh, but uh, I think I was too old for her. And because mm. when she found out my age, she, her her tone changed. We were fine up until she found out what my age was compared to her. We were we had it actually about a a ten year age gap. Oh and, yeah. And you know I'm like so this is like the, you know we kind of went out out on a date, and I asked her it's like. So yeah, you know, like I'd lo- I'd love to take you out more. This be this was a lot of fun. Um, what do you think? And she's like, "Well, I'm not really looking for a boyfriend right now. Um, hmm. I'm not really looking for anything serious." But this, yeah, this was a lot of fun. So you know, thanks. I'm like, "Yeah, no, no, of course, no problem." About God, a month later, she had a boyfriend. <laughs> oh, of, of course, course right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Month later, had a boyfriend. <laughs> so, a lot of times, now you can tell me why, Sarah. Why are you all so subtle about saying no to us? I don't want to hurt your feelings. I, I, I mean, I know that's why. <laughs> I understand that's why, but we, we're okay. We're dumb. Dudes are dumb when it comes to this stuff. We always believe we have a little bit of hope. Or a chance, you know? Yeah. Right? Like, what was it? Um, oh, my God. What was it? Uh, Dumb and Dumber, right? Where the she said, oh, so saying there's a chance. This chance. Right? Like, <laughs> she, she flat out told him no, but he still hung on. And that's what dudes do, right? We do that. So, I don't know. Based on, before you answer the question of wh- uh, 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 of of maybe other ways that maybe women can... Or unless you think being subtle is, is a perfectly fine way to do things, I'm I'm okay with that as well. But um, my vibe from this question is she's not really that interested. Well, yeah, I I guess that could be the case, and yeah, it could could I, some people are less subtle. I mean, but honestly, if she'd been like, "Sorry, you're old," like wouldn't have <laughs> kind of like, "Ouch!" Uh, 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 but at least I'd have my answer. I mean, it would hurt, but then I wouldn't... I mean, she did say no, but she didn't give you a reason having to do with your age or your appearance. She was like, oh, it's me. It's what I want. It's not not, it's not, not you. It's not anyone. Right. And it is possible she convinced herself she didn't want a boyfriend until she met a guy she wanted to be with. Yeah. That happens. But, I mean, it's just going to be hard to get people to stop, like trying to protect people's feelings and letting them down in a not completely honest way. Um, I mean, honestly, everybody does it. Everybody who's not a sociopath does it sometimes. Um, 
I don't know if that's what this girl is doing. I think I do sense some disinterest, mm. but I don't know that it's for sure a lost cause. I do think the question asker should not try to secure a date in the next couple days. I think if she doesn't reach out first, just consider that opportunity one you're going to have to let go of. Um, and you reach out to her when you're back in town, maybe like once or just be like, you know, Hey, do you want to get together on Friday or something? And then, you know, maybe she really was busy and didn't know anything. If you ask a second time and she's like, you know, I don't know, I'm busy or whatever, then you can just say, okay, that's it. It's she's not interested. But you can always just try one more time. I just wouldn't do it now. It is too soon. She clearly needs some time to think about it. Give her some time to like breathe and like, you know, digest the date and maybe even have a chance to miss you a tiny bit. Yeah. And then, you know, just try one more time. I mean, what what's it going to hurt to try one more time? And if then she's like, you're still giving you the like, well, I don't know. I'm pretty busy for the rest of the month. Then you'd be like, no problem. You know. I had a great time anyways. And then that's it. Exactly. Um, Something that I had read somewhere is if you don't hear from them after a while. So let's say after this date, you know, you're like, hey, had a great time. You know, that was a lot of fun. Not not don't ask her on a date again. Just be like, hey, there's just just say, hey, great. That was a lot of that was a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. Done. Right. If they don't reply. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're gone for a week, right? Because right? he says, uh, he says, I'm going to be out of town for a ne- until next week. Okay, so you, you gave the few days, and then you're gone for a week. And you never get a reply. Just give one last one being like, you know, just, just I just want to put it out there that I, I thought we had a really good time that, that night. Just letting you know, like, it'd be great to do it again. If not, cool. You know, get, go, go ahead and give her the out. But but then you can you can close the door definitively for yourself and be like cool it is now the ball i have thrown the ball in her car she doesn't want to throw it back cool you can now move on to the other person who's Mm -hmm. too busy to i mean i mean who's (laughs) (laughs) you can move on to the next rejection (laughs) oh what a cold cold world we live in oh no (laughs) no well you know, but you know, you can now move on. To, you you can at least progress forward and find someone else with the potential to to date who won't reject you as you know, or or anything like that. And and you can have a good time with and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, I mean, it's cool. To, like that sucks because oftentimes I feel I feel the same way. Again, I had a hard time when I dated online because some you know a few of the girls that I had dated through online dating really like like hanging out with me and i'm like Oof, i wish i felt the same you know like <laughs> i mean i didn't say that to their face i'm just like <laughs> yeah well like, you know i'm still i haven't committed to anything yet so i'm still gonna be on <gasps> you pulled the same one on them no 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 Francis? no 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 not in that <laughs> sense i'm just like i haven't i was like i i, I was honest with them in the sense of like I'm not gonna. I'm not yet ready to date you exclusively. I still want to be able to date through the app a little. Oh, not, I see. Not, not, not like I'm not keeping ready for, things open yeah. and friendly. Yeah, it's like so. If you're okay with that, and she's like, no, I just want. One of them was like, no, 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 no. I, I'm ready to, ha- you know, I'm ready to kind of try this thing out. I'm like, oh well, I am not ready yet, so I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, and and then oh man, I felt so bad because then they reached out to me again. I think like a few weeks afterwards, and I'm like, I'm not replying to you. Mm. Delete. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I explained things. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I thought I had made it fairly clear. Delete. No, so yeah, I did. You know, sometimes it happens, but. You know, because um, if you listen to the last episode, uh, I was hot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was from the hot category. No, I was hot in the sense of I was sweating a lot. It was really nervous, nerve wracking. Oh, it was terrible. But <laughs> yes, uh, do that. So here's my question to you, Sarah. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I know it's being nice, being subtle, and kind of the lying part. I'm okay with actually. I'd rather you lie than be subtle, because then I get mm-hmm. a response. Like again with my one, the one girl that I, that I dated that one time. I was happy that it was like, okay, you gave me an excuse, even if it was a lie or even if it was, you know, uh, I, and I don't know, whatever it was at the time. I'm like, at least you gave me something. But some people are just like, you know, this woman over here who's like, well, I don't know, like still giving him that little, like little, bloop, little droplet of hope of saying, well, maybe not now, but later. Like that's, I don't know. Like, like, do you do like when someone is interested in you and you're like, "Hey, Sarah, let's go out to the zoo," and you're like, "Well, I'd be like, uh, Toasty, yeah, you're paying for the zoo. Let's go." <laughs> you would. I guess you'll have to bleep that. Just... <laughs> and then I would hit, I would dump him after the zoo, obviously. Um. <laughs> dump him after the zoo. I'm sorry. The zoo is a good time. Just like. <laughs> the giraffes and oh, they used to have pygmy marmosets, but they got rid of them. They're the tiniest monkey. Yeah, I love pygmy marmosets, and they're they're amazing. Um, <gasps> you're awful. <laughs> Lee, funny? No, I won't. No, I don't use no. men for zoo passes. I don't. Uh, I'm above that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, if someone asks me out and I didn't want to go out with them. Honestly, I've gotten better as I've gotten older. Um, I've been able to say things like, you know, well, I'm assuming we're talking about someone I've already been on a date with. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is date number two. Generally, what would happen in the recent past where I had matured past the point of not being able to, you know, express myself but had not yet met my current boyfriend, I would, uh, usually after a date, they would text me and they'd be like, I had a really great time, blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, you know what? You're a really great person, but I just wasn't really feeling a romantic connection. And that'd usually be the end of it. If somehow they had like, just, yeah, asked me for a date right afterwards, I would say the same thing. I'd say I just wasn't feeling that, honestly. Um, I think of you like my brother. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you had- remind me of my brother. Uh, uh, or, you know, you could come up with a really great big lie to scare them away like i feel the same about you but i feel like i should come clean and let you know i'm a murderer that this i'm a murderer or this saturday i am implanting eight healthy embryos into my womb because i want to be the next octo mom and if you're on board then come along for this journey because i could sure (laughs) i could sure use a provider right about now god (laughs) wow okay (laughs) Would that be a good answer to get rid of you? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's their dream. It's like, yes. That's what I'm Reality saying. TV. Would you be like, well, I sure did like the first date. I think I could do eight kids that aren't mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I also realized that, uh, you know, I felt it was, if, or it felt like I was dating my brother or whatever. I was like, oh, I was hanging out with my brother. It's like that wouldn't actually be a deterrent thanks to po- current porn. So never mind. Oh, <laughs> God! Be like, really? Like their eye, the ears perk up. Is like that's awesome. Like, oh no, no red, red flag, red flag, red flag. <laughs> Escape, abort. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So wait, and also <laughs> wait a bit, and also, um, yeah. I mean, just learn to take hint. <laughs> I mean, it could it could be that it could be the end of it for sure. But there's no harm in trying once more. But to give yourself a little bit of a better chance, yeah. Like Francis said, just wait. Here's, here's a question. Let's say she didn't mean it, or she is literally like busy, and she is, you know, whatever. Wouldn't she then, if the date meant anything to her, would she not effectively, after the couple weeks, reach out anyway? Um. Or does does do you think that the the re, the him reaching out is the more important? Some people. If they don't hear back from the person, 
especially if the other person was the one trying to set up the date, might just go ahead and assume they lost interest, they met someone else. Maybe they'll even think, oh, I should have said something, but I didn't. I missed my chance. A lot of people just like kind of build a story in their heads and give up. Um, maybe even, you know, say, oh, I missed my chance. I, I don't want to risk rejection because I'm, I liked him, but I'm not that committed to like right. maybe getting rejected by coming back and him being like, well, you said you were busy. So I, you know, I crossed you off the list. So it's possible that she could become more enthusiastic about it. But then when she doesn't hear from him, just decides eh, it didn't happen. Okay. Cause I, that's a possibility. Okay, yeah. Cause I, I'm, I'm so under the impression and I could be, so naive in regards to this is that if you desire something enough, if something really tickles your pickle so much, so <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> if it really butters your biscuits, you will go out of your way, <laughs> you'll make the effort, like you will go, you will make, you will make a concerted effort to reach out, to communicate, to to make that connection because to you it had value. If there was no value to that date, then yeah, it's just like, oh, all right, moving on. Mm. Okay. Well, here's two scenarios, right? Both in which she actually did like the date but didn't realize it until a little bit later because she just got done with him. Maybe she's overwhelmed. She got a relationship. She's like, I don't know how I feel about this. You know, I'm not going to commit to anything right now. She doesn't hear from him right away. And she, she starts to kind of like think about how the date was fun and she hasn't heard from him. And it would be cool to hear from me. If I heard from him again, I would say yes. Yeah. I would like to go on another date with him. Be, I kind of hope he reaches out to me. He hasn't reached out to me. Oh my God. It's been a few days. I would really like to hear from him. And then either it gets to the point where it's been a few weeks and she just says, well, that sucks. You know, I probably should have said, yes, I want to go on another date, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. And then she enjoyed it. It just wasn't like it didn't butter her biscuit, I guess. She just it was just good, but not, you know, it was still just the first date. And you can be totally wrong about someone on a first date. So it's not the end of the world or she really, really loved it. Like she's starting to really build him up in her head now. And she's very much wanting to hear back from him. And then she might reach out and be like, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm less busy now. Did you want to maybe do that second date? You know, sorry. I know I was really busy mm-hmm. or something along those lines, but I see. I guess it depends on her level of desire and her fear of rejection. Her level of yeah, her level of enthusiasm and yeah, um, whether or not her fear of him moving, having moved on because of what uh, whatever number of times. So she she really really would have had to have been in a situation where it really creamed her Twinkie for her to be able to. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to come up with more of these food things. <laughs> It had to really baste her turkey. Anyway, moving on. Um, all right. What's, what's the next question we have on here? Okay. What kinds of things should people put in their dating profile to be more appealing and get more matches? Well, you're the success. Okay. Well, I've had some relationships from dating profiles, but that also means I've had some relationships that didn't work out from dating profiles. So, Well, here's the thing, right? Men will swipe... Lonely men, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> will swipe more or less on every face they see in a, into, in a uh, dating app. Um, mm-hmm. I, th- I remember, for the most part, unless I just, like, loves hiking. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, because everyone <laughs> loves hiking. And it's just like, yeah, okay. Everyone loves hiking. Uh, I put hates hiking, loves vertical walking. <laughs> loves horizontal mambo um (laughs) 
Uh, just pick directions. Yeah, no, I love that. I love the <laughs> vertical walking. I love it. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so, for a lot of men, they're they're more likely, kind of, despite the profile, will probably swipe right or click like or whatever, whatever, whatever the the, the system is for that particular dating app. They're more likely to do it more for women than they, you know, than I think women would do for men, right? I think women are, are a little more discerning mm-hmm. and a little more, pe- I was going to say peculiar, but the, the, I, was, I mean, not peculiar, but specific. Like they Particular. Know Particular. Thank you. Thank you. That's <sighs> Sarah, the font of knowledge. I love it. Um, so, and so you've had that experience you've had, you've seen many immense profiles. You've had mm-hmm. to dissect them even read between the lines because I'm certain – I'm not saying you've done it so much that you can, like, analyze it like Sherlock Holmes. And be like, oh, well, I know where they live now. But, like, you look at the profiles like, okay, I know what that means, you know, when they say they like, I don't know, recreational hot dog throwing or something. It's like, <laughs> oh, well. They masturbate a lot. Okay, gotcha. What? I would not know that that's what that means. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I'd be like, ladies, what does it you, mean? Ladies, if you ever cross my profile and that's on there, you know what it means now. Um, <laughs> now I know. Tossing that, tossing that hot dog. So, no, but you, you've seen enough men's profiles. Mm-hmm. What is it about a, let, let's go with men first. What, what about a man's profile do you think? really makes it shine. Well, I know that I'm looking for something that not all women are looking for or that women look for different things. So I will see certain things on profiles a lot. And must I'll... love Richard Ayoade. <laughs> must be Richard Ayoade. Must, must be Richard Ayoade. <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking for his profile. Oh, my God. Um, now I think he's married. But yeah, (laughs) can't win them all, Sarah. You can't win them all. Can't win them all. But I think the thing that there's things that does that do turn a lot of women on that I'm not into. So I see them on a lot of profiles, Uh, things that and also it's like a regional thing like here. And I know other guys I know around here. So they've noticed that this is a thing women are looking for here. Beards are in around here a little bit of the lumberjack look is in here <laughs> and yeah the hiking thing i think people will finally stop saying that because oh, good yeah everyone around here hikes because a lot of forests and stuff and hiking and camping and all that jazz um but i see a lot of guys that post things that make me think they might be like a little too testosterone for me but like women might be into like other women might be into not women because i am a woman but other women might be into I can uh, 100 yeah Ugh. yeah like Ugh. they're they're off they're off rotors or whatever and they're many many guns and they're outdoor sport type things that you would go to like cabela's to get the equipment for not that these are things women can't enjoy and i yeah, I probably wouldn't go off roading and shooting a bunch, but like, you know, there's some outdoor sports that I would be fun. But I think those give off an impression that some women are into. I'm not into. Okay, so th- those are. The, but what are the what are the the ones that uh, that do? For me, I like. Okay, I'm definitely looking for smart and funny and a little bit nerdy but not too much not so much that there's like interests that take up much of their brain space like they spend many many hours of the day gaming or they need to go to all of the movies of this type or you know, things like that. Like, it's okay if you have a hobby or an interest like that, but I just don't want it to make up so much of their life that it's going to be pretty important for me to pretend to be into it also. 
what, what, what if that's not a requirement, though? What if it's just like, hi, I'm so-and-so, and I love to watch DC films, mm-hmm. but the requirement – but that's just – you know, it, it's you not a the, requirement yeah. that you come with me to every DC movie. In you existence. know what? I would like go – 700 hours long. Yeah, I would go and I would go to movies with you and we could watch them at home. I think it's actually a bigger thing for me if you talk about it all the time. It's hard for me to be around people who talk about interests that aren't like real life things like all the time, you know? Well, well, yeah, and I get what you mean because now, you know, we've kind of fetishized nerd being a nerd, right? Mm -hmm. We've turned it into... um, Nerds rule the world. Oh, look at us. We're. <laughs> oh, yeah. is that, is that, I, I guess that's my nerd voice. Ooh, oh, hey, Rocky. Oh, let's go. And, uh. No. Um. So the nerds have t- taken over. They rule the world now, right? Everything is nerd. Every big blockbuster film is a Marvel film. Every um. There's a bill. Oh, what was the billboard? There's like a billboard for like a video game and like the middle of this town, the city center. And I was like, that's weird that there's an ad for a video game in the middle of a city center. Oh, it was in Las Vegas. It's in Las Vegas. Like one of the biggest billboards in Hmm. Vegas is for a video game. And I'm like, Oh, Oh, it's it's for a game. I don't even like. Um, so like it, it has in, it kind of enveloped our environment in our in our universe, so for instance, what what would be an an appropriate amount of talking about uh, an interest that you feel doesn't go overboard? Then, and it, would you rather they talk to their friends about it versus some talking to you about it who has no interest in particularly what that thing is? It's really hard to quantify. Like I can certainly. You know, if you want to tell me about your interests and explain it to me a little bit, that's cool. But, you know, I've hung out with people who just want to, I don't know, it's like they talk about it so much, they're trying to convince me to like it. Yeah, they're like, that, that's that's typical. I, I, yeah. Your, your current boyfriend does not try to you gauge know what? your interest in, in things that he, he's interested in? He's a nerdy guy, but he doesn't too much. He will send me YouTube videos of like sciencey stuff or like, um, like, like 3d cool 3d printing projects. And I don't know a lot about it, but I'll certainly take a look at it and be like, Oh, that's really cool. But then he's not like, you know, sending me a bunch of articles and like talking about it all night or like trying to get me to be more excited about it than I am. I think it's interesting. I love that he introduces me to new stuff and he does pick things that are, you know, an interesting thing for someone who doesn't know much about it to see. It's not like I have to be immersed in the world of 3d printing to appreciate this thing. I I don't know what the amount is. I had, I had a friend of a friend who was really, really into this one celebrity from like a fandom of some kind. And she just like would talk about them nonstop. I couldn't even get a word in edgewise, like trying to convince me what an amazing person the celebrity was, which by the way, how do you know? This yeah, is right, all just right. like them it's, projecting it's, it's, themselves to their fans. Yeah. Speculation. Yeah. yeah. Um, And it was just, I just kept being like, yeah, that's cool. They sound great. Yeah. Sounds like a good person. You know, what else can I say to that? I don't, like the that fandom that much it's okay it's fine yeah i mean yeah that's that that's that's an interesting topic when it comes to interests and in fandom because obviously you're not going to be 100 percent interested in someone's fandom or not everyone is also even willing to indulge or dip into said fandom you know i think when i was younger with my ex-wife, I indulged in her fandoms. I got, I read the Twilight books. I, <laughs> I watched the movies, you know. And oh I, boy, <sighs> that's some commitment there. Well, it was her, it was her interest, and I'm like, what do you find interesting about this? What do you find, you know? 
uh, fascinating or um, what sucks you in. Like, I want to know why you love this stuff. And she did the same thing with my v- gaming. She be- she was never a gamer, and then she became a little bit of one, right? So she started playing video games, um, not necessarily with me, but she would play the games that I had played and and play and tried them out and like you know did her own thing and so we delved into each other's interests in that way but not everyone is built that way to just want to do that and be like okay I'll dip into it I've never done it before but I'll try it right yeah and we didn't do everything the same like again she liked to go to the club I didn't so we didn't really do a lot of that stuff so there was this back and forth you know um so that's kind of the biggest contrast I, example I can think of. That's a big contrast. But nowadays, it's a little easier because as we get older, I think we find more people who are of like mind. And it's a little easier to be like, oh, you're interested in this thing? Cool. So am I. Nah. And, and you can make friends that way. I had a friend. I, I made a new friend who's like really into music. I'm really – I'm not like – really into music, but I love different types of music and how they make me feel. And they have a a similar experience. So we had a big, you know, not a big, but we had a a bit of a discussion on that. And it was like really Mm -hmm. nice to be able to talk to someone who understood where I was coming from in that. And it's like, oh, that's, that's nice. And you can build off that, but you're not always, but then what about anything else? Maybe there's nothing else to build off of just that one thing. So that's, that's, that's interesting. And I think that a lot of people feel like they have to be able to, like, well, if you like football, I guess I have to like football. So I'm going to watch football. Oh, you like, uh, I don't know, whittling wood and turning them into, I don't know, God, whatever whittling does to wood. Uh, cut, yeah, Great. I'll do that too. You know, oh, you like craft beer? Bye. No. So we, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, there's things where – yeah, I, I I get where you're coming from, where it's like... Well, I think it's great to, like, share in each other's interests. Um, but also have I, separate worlds at the same time. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, we do things that the other person likes to do. We watch movies and shows that he likes and some that I like. And some of them we find that we both really, really like, that the other person liked first. And some we just watch sometimes. You know, I just watch some movies and shows that he really likes, and he definitely likes them more than I do. But they're they're okay, they're good. So I'm happy to watch them when he wants to. But we don't talk about it a whole lot, other than like maybe the 30 minutes after we watched it. And and of course, it's not like he brought up later. I'd be like, that time is over. We do not talk about it anymore. <laughs> I don't have like hard limits on this stuff. I'm just saying, like, I look at some profiles and I'm like. Whoa, this person is all about Marvel. Like, I like Marvel's movies. They're good, well made movies with a high budget. You know, what's not to like? But I can tell that that is their life. And I just don't have the mental energy to talk about Marvel that much or go to all of the conventions or do all the cosplays and yeah. hang around friend, gr- friend groups that talk about it all the time. And there's just like a lot of other subjects in life that I like to discuss with my partner. And if I see that kind of thing, I might be like, I'm sure they will find another Marvel lover, but I I'm not that into it. So big, like if it's like nerdy to the point where they're like really all about a certain thing, like a certain nerdy thing, I guess if it's sports, that's another thing. It's not really nerdy, but if they're like clearly, their yeah. whole life is about like being a sports fan. That would be way too much for me also. Yeah. I, th- I feel like, especially in the last 30 years, maybe more fandoms and nerddoms have become identities. It has become mm-hmm. personalities. It has, you know, outside of those things, they don't have a personality. Their personality is very much wrapped in the things that they love versus like, an accumulation of their experiences, which is what personality usually is. It's like, hey, all those things that I went through and felt and kind of hated or loved, that's who I am. Yeah. And nowadays, it's, you know, that whole Marvel franchise that has been around for the last, you know, 15 years? 
That's all I can think about. That's all I talk about. That's all I do. And I see that actually a lot, especially on Twitter, where mm. some accounts, they don't talk about anything other than the thing that they're a fan of. They don't yeah. talk about life. They don't talk about uh, current events. They don't talk about jokes or humor or anything. It's just, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. like this thing is blah, <laughs> like, that's my thing. Oh, that's me. You know, I am the embodiment of the thing that I love and that's it. Yeah. And, and I think it's because I don't know where that comes from, actually. And it's scary, really. And if you see that more often, that scares me a lot because boy, oh boy, is that like worrisome. Yeah, I know. I, I like talking about life and like philosophy and like, you know, psychology and, you know, fun new interests, trying different things, hobbies, crafts, art, some interesting science stuff, good news, you know, like it's. Yeah, talking a whole lot about things that I don't want to say aren't real, but like aren't actually a part of our lives that are like, well, yeah, they're <laughs> like yeah. focused around someone else, like an actor or a sports person or a character or someone else's life yeah. that you don't even know or a, a fake life, a fantasy life that isn't is, you're not a part of. It's cool to be interested in that, but if your whole life's about that, well, what's your life then? Well, th that's why um, I think the Kardashians started it, really. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it's because uh, well, uh, they, they glamorized this lifestyle that everyone kind of idolized and, and wanted more of. And it's like, oh, that's the kind of world I want to live in. So when it comes to this stuff, yeah, it's it's really distressing but it's also because that's what they're inundated with. That's what we're given, right? And it's also an escape. People would rather escape now. There's kind of an, what do you call it? There's kind of a phenomenon that, that I've seen brought up where adults refuse to grow up. Yeah. That, the, you know, the Disney adults the who mm. are just obsessed with Disney and that's their entire personality is Disney, right? Oh, and yeah. I, I I watch a few YouTubers who are just like, that's their life is Disneyland. And they look normal. They act, they don't act normal, but they look normal. They don't look like zombies or aliens, but they are because that's everything about them. There's not, there's nothing outside of that personality other than Disney. Yay. You know, Mickey. Yay. Like, Oh, okay. We, yeah. and they're, and they're adults. And yeah, I think, and we've I think there's a there's a there's a generation of us, our generation specifically, that was never required to grow up. We were mm -hmm. never required to become adults. We were never required to work as children or get a job after high school. Or I mean, not requ I mean required. I mean, people did, but they weren't required to get that job after high school. They weren't required to have to make a living early on, get married young, have children young or whatever, like the previous generations did. And so I think a lot of us are still very much that that's where, I think that's where, where your, your, their personality is the fandom is coming from is because it could be, I think also people, we also are lot. They say that like our lives and our generations are, are more bleak because of the way the economy and society is so we do maybe um, indulge in more escapism we also have all this technology and media available to us and it's easier to binge and to isolate ourselves um i know people who are really really into disney but also into other things and i think you know being into something and having other interests and engaging with the world is a healthy mix but yeah like everything about you is disney and you don't really like engaging with the real world outside of Disneyland. That's maybe a result of a lot of escapism and like, uh, just trying to, well, that's, that's what we've been talking about, right? Metaverse. Yeah. All the, that stuff. the metaverse, it's only going to make it so much worse. Also, fine. I was going to say there is, there are like people who are neurodivergent and who are very focused on interests. Yeah. And that's, 
that's a different thing, I think. That's like well, just yes. just the way their minds work. So sure. you might find someone that talks a lot about their interests, but you say, well, you know, they're neurodivergent and that's the way their mind works. And I am happy to hear them talk about their interests because that makes them really happy. And this is how we engage. And, you know, that's just our relationship. But right. if you are able to, you know, step away from just one interest, if that isn't like something that is your way with engaging with the world only, if you're able to, I would certainly encourage it. Well, again, I think that with the neurodivergency, that's a little more maybe the exception than the rule, I would think. It is, yeah. I mean, just to say, like, it doesn't – sometimes it is – that's just how people – some people's minds work, and it is a rare thing. Yeah. So that, would that be – but yeah, so it, it, with, that, with that, I think – um, again, we are, this is a one sentence question and we have oh my God. blown it up into a thing. <laughs> so the last thing I'm going to say, in, in, because there is an article later on about what not to put in a profile. I think a lot of honest pictures of how you look, I think is really important. Um, mm-hmm. I had been deceived a few times by how a person looks because of, yeah, because of the, uh, I know you weren't exampling that, but they do the MySpace angle, which is. Oh, uh, right now. <laughs> I know, I know that's not what you were doing. I, you were like adjusting your air conditioning, but like people put the 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 Facebook angle or the the MySpace angle, which I don't know. I guess it's not called that anymore because it doesn't exist. But you know, there's that high angle picture that makes them look a certain way, and then when you see them, it's like, oh, oh, well, that's not what you look like in your picture. Be honest with that stuff because we're gonna you're gonna see them in person at some point, right? You know, I know one day we're going to talk about catfishing. We've, we've teased this. <laughs> we're going to talk about catfishing. Someday. It's going to be a whole episode or, or bonus episode. Who knows? But people want to put their best foot forward. But and do. Don't be like, hey, these are my flaws on your profile. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't just like screw the pooch immediately and be like, well, you know, I I like to, I don't know, um, kick. Uh, kick puppies every once in a while because that's that sounds like fun. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, you need to work on yourself before you get on those profiles. I think <laughs> well, exactly right. Or, or you know, uh, I like to moonwalk over broken glass. Oh, that's strange. yikes! This is the yeah. dark part of the dating apps. <laughs> Obviously, put in your be- put your best foot forward, but also be honest with the, your look. I, I was always very. It was to the front. It was never high angle. It was uh, my full body. You can see that I'm bit and I'm not skinny or thin or or muscular. I'm just a big guy, um, not huge, but just a bigger person. So you mm. get to see what I look like. There's no deception. You get to see it. I mean, I don't have a profile now, but I'm just saying, like, if I did, you'd see everything. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm saying about. You know, be honest in your dating profile in pictures and make a lot. Show the stuff that you like to do. Show yourself out there having fun, doing things, uh, going on vacation, you know, going on vacation, going out, having fun, doing stuff you love. Because when people see that, they're like, oh, this guy seems kind of cool or girl seems kind of fun. Yeah. And don't put that you like hiking. Everyone likes. (laughs) Or fun or music. (laughs) <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that one in a second. Oh, that's right. We got that. All right. You know, we have a corner on this episode, on the show, that we dedicate to one particular cow from a particular coast. His name is Right Cow Left Coast. And he sends us messages pretty much. I think he sent an, an, one every episode. I missed one once. And so we didn't do it that episode, but he, literally every episode has been kind enough to send us some comments. So what do we have this time around? So this one is a lot of comments about our other episodes, but he asked a funny question I wanted uh, to us. Sure. He says, sick of certain people? Do you want to expand on that thought? Are you sick of me and and, or the lengthy emails, replies, comments I send? And oh my god. I I'm pretty sure he's talking about when we talked about weather talk and I said I get sick of certain people. I mean, I get sick of it when people talk about so that was like totally a a slip. I did not mean to say I get sick of certain people. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, no. Where, where, where I am, I, I'm personally not sick of anyone in particular. Am I? I don't think so. I can't. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. I'm sick of uh, sick of. So, hmm. Not like in my personal life or in anyone I've talked about on here. So, yeah. I, I mean, there's types of people like you know the small like the certain small talk people and whatever. Like, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Because I, I think it's part of the introvert. Personality that you don't like small talk, like that's not not you personally, but like introverts <laughs> don't necessarily like small talk in general. I think that's part of like what encompasses introversion. I'm not really sure, but um, mm. no, no, love you. I love your. I know. I I know. We don't really read. Uh, we read the whole thing, but we don't read it on the show. The whole the whole message. Uh, we just look for the questions because we want to be able to answer questions and plus. We only have so much time. Yeah, we had to pick the best one, and that one made me laugh because no, we're not sick of you. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we appreciate were... all of the comments and questions. We do. For instance, you have a question here that says that I already answered, but I'm going to answer it again anyway, just in case you may have missed it. But yes, when do we record? So we record on Monday. We re- we record um uh, to a, at least an episode ahead. So anytime you listen to an episode, like right now we're, up, we're recording episode 11 and 12 today so that we're always a day ahead just in case we ever need to take a vacation like I had to for the 4th of July weekend. I had to take a vacation so Sarah and I couldn't record. This is just so we can take breaks, vacations, time off, whatever, and we don't miss a beat. I, I want to be able to – this is one of the podcasts I have worked the hardest to where Yay. I'm sure there's an episode <laughs> Every single week. That's consistent. Every Friday at 7.30. It was originally like central time. I didn't realize that. So now it's Pacific. So now it should be 7.30 <laughs> Pacific. Pff, who knows why? I didn't see that. Whatever. So, you know, that, so, so that's what we're doing with, with, with the recording. So um, the, 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 and how it impacts us is that you're not going to hear us answer your question until – Usually two weeks from when you ask it, yeah. So um, that sucks. And and any like, not that dating and relationships have big events that happen, right? Like there was a you know, there's big world events that happen that we're not necessarily going to. Um, I mean, I guess at some point we will if it, if if it ever comes up as part of a topic, right? Like I know there's a particular uh, event that happened recently that very much involves relationships and involves mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Are, are we going to talk about it now? Not necessarily for, for whatever, you know, for several reasons, really um, we're trying to keep the show light. And also everyone is already talking about it, right? Like It's not something you need to hear from us per se, other than like, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, we're not for it for what happened. <laughs> Right, but that's it. That, that, but but what? But what more can you get from us other than that? Right? Like, what else can you really get? Unless again, it's part of the topic and it's part of a question that somebody asks. Yeah, definitely, yeah. we're not for it. But it's kind of um, it, it's maybe a heavier than our general conversation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we talk. We talk about some heavy things. We do per se. But and I this think, might come up. It might come up in a question, yeah, in which case we could saying. talk about it. But yeah. usually when we meander, it's not about world events so much. Yeah. yeah. But, but needless to say, we are aware of that kind of stuff. So Yes, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, and there you go. So, yeah. and uh, But anyway, as for any other any other questions maybe that uh, – or, or comments – uh, that uh, right cow has that you want us to touch tonight? Touch. <laughs> oh yeah, he did mention the the touch suits. He yeah. Said it was from an episode of Futurama. Possibly, I don't remember that. I don't remember that either. But mind you, I haven't seen a lot of Futurama. Un- unfortunately, it's it's like the 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 black hole of my entertainment, where I didn't really get to watch a lot of it. Didn't have cable. It was on Sci-Fi for a long time. So or FX. 
whatever the freaking channel was. I don't, I don't know. If it wasn't on basic TV, I'm like, pfft, I didn't get to see it. But Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good show, though. Yeah. No, no, it's great. It's great. Uh, they're having a reunion episode or something. I forget. I keep hearing. I don't know. They, they all got together again for something. Maybe even I a think, series. Yeah, I think only the first three seasons are the ones I really like. Oh really? Oh well. The, so I don't know if this is true, and I should really look it up so I know. But like one of the producers or writers died in the middle really? of really, and so as a result, a lot of I guess there's a there, after a certain season, all the episodes end depressingly. Like the dog one. Have you do you know the dog episode? <gasps> oh my god! I bawled my eyes out after I saw that one. Right or the dating one where he's trying to get he's trying to go on a date with with Layla Leela Leela right Leela yeah and he's going through time over yeah. and over and over again I mean honestly there was a lot that like had sad endings that were supposed to end sad and but that dog one that one just destroyed me I don't think any cartoon or show has made me cry that hard it's a tough episode yeah, yeah that is one. very hard so. There you go. Uh, we, uh, we'll have to find that episode. If you know what the episode number is, let us know. We'll look it up. Um, we'll watch it on. We'll watch it for a bonus episode in a couple weeks or something. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no. Anything is possible. Anyway. If you want to just have an episode of me just crying, no, 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 then no, yeah, no, we the, could do the, that. Uh, the one with the suits. The one with the suits. Oh, the suits. Not, <laughs> not the dog one. The dog one. No, no, no. We're both gonna be like, oh my god. What Just a recording happened? of us sobbing. Yeah. No, no, no. We're not gonna do that. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Let's wrap things up with an article. We have one specifically on uh, dating, and it's from a site that we actually know versus the last one where we didn't quite know it, but it's CNET.com. And we're going to be talking about why you need to stop using these dating app phrases. A-S-A-P. Another, another acronym. Oh. <sighs> well, that one's been around for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> As F. Uh, <laughs> ASF. <laughs> Is it so ASF or As F? It has to be As F, right? ASF. A-S-S? A-F-S? ASF. ASF, right? Yeah. It yeah. used to be AF. Now it's ASF. So wouldn't it be as F or is it ASF? Because then ASF means like everyone's a, an individual word, wouldn't it? I didn't know that they said these things out loud. I thought they were just typed. Oh, people say lol. Yeah. How do you say OFC? Off. Oh, oh, off. <laughs> 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 well, off, obvi. Actually, it's obvi. Well, obvi. obvi. Yeah. Well, they do. It's like it seems like they say the unless we're getting what these mean incorrectly. It seems like they're saying the small two letter words, the full thing, and then just the the second word is just the first letter. Right. O F C A S F. A S F. If I'm understanding this correctly, which I could be totally off. I D K. Ha. <laughs> 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 LOL. <laughs> LOL. Uh, Raffle. Raffle. <laughs> Raffle Mao. Okay, anyway. Um... <laughs> uh, GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we probably sound like old people. <laughs> uh, oh, I know. I know. FR. <laughs> uh IKR. <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, okay, geez. we should use like uh, real words now to describe this article. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go for it. All right. So what's I'm gonna look for one of the funny ones that made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. So this was um this was somebody who decided to uh to actually go through people's um. I guess it says Bumble, so these are Bumbles. I mean, they're not just specific to Bumble, but uh, they're on the uh, the dating apps, or as they like to call it in italicies, the apps. I've also heard them called old online dating. Got. 
I've seen that. But no, but it, it sounds so. It doesn't sound appealing. Yeah, old. it sounds gross. It sounds the, like you've not, given up. Yeah, it sounds it's like, like. I guess I'm gonna be. I guess I'm gonna old again. Uh, <laughs> don't mind me. I'm gonna be on old. Yeah. Looking for love through old. All the old places. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I So one of them I liked was, please be interesting. Oh, my God. I would roll my eyes so hard if I saw that on a profile. She says. So, yeah, that, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, she says the implication is that you are fabulously interesting, that you're fabulously interesting. Or at least interesting enough to pass judgment on others. And I have to say, yes. If I saw that, I would be like, wow, you must be so interesting if you must request that other people need to be interesting. Here's here's the thing. I actually do think a lot of people think they're interesting. Like, uh, like they're not. But they <laughs> believe they are. Because they're probably... Okay. Sorry. I'm going to go here. Okay. <laughs> Attractive people don't have to be interesting because they're attractive. As such, they default to thinking they're incredibly interesting because usually, if you, especially if you're a guy and you're with a, you're at an attract, you just nod and smile at everything, and they think they're like, "Wow, I'm so I've captivated him. He's just staring at my eyes," you know, like or whatever. <laughs> or whatever right but they're just they're just admiring the person versus genuinely actively listening they're just like wow she's really hot and she's just talking to me like that's pretty cool and they're just talking about like frivolous nonsensical stuff about their dog or a shopping trip they've had now look (laughs) I realize that people have things that they want to talk about. Their dog. Their dog, which I'm fine with. That's fine. You but know, it's like ever. the dog fandom. Yeah. The, oh. <laughs> I'm, yes. Yeah, right. Or, and look, I, I know you're a cat owner, but cat there are cat fandoms as well. Oh, I I was not aware of that, Francis. <laughs> just saying, just saying. I know you. I know you love your cat. Pete, Pete the Pod cat is amazing. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but some people's personalities do kind of revolve around yes. their pet, and when it's unique, I love it when it's unique. I love when it's like a a ferret or something, or like a oh right, a, right, a special like, pet. Yeah, a special pet, or like a rare dog or something, or a toy poodle. You know, something that fits in your pocket or something that fits in a bag. Now, look, and, and, oh, geez, I feel bad because I'm making it seem like all attractive people are dumb. They're not. None of, no, there are no dumb, attractive people. There's different levels of just interest and different levels of what's fun. But yeah, yeah. Well, be inter- please be interesting is is fairly yeah that's uh. well it's and yeah it's probably said by someone who's not that interesting yeah did you ever see Thirty Rock? I uh, Thirty Rock oh that's uh the Tina Fey Tina Fey yeah, yeah. there was an episode or more, maybe more than one where she dated John Hamm played a character oh jeez yeah and they they talked about the bubble because he's so devastatingly handsome that. He thinks he's really good at stuff, but he's not. People just are so nice to him and like keep like he gets promoted at work and people let him get away with everything. And he thinks he's interesting and talented and good at sports and he's bad at all of it. And at first she thinks like he's just the greatest, but then she starts seeing how totally crappy he is at everything. And there's like no way to convince him of it because everyone else tells him he's amazing. But her... Yeah, wow. That's well. For a uh, based on act- that, that's a thing. That, that's actually a thing. Not the, the bubble. bubble. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I guess yeah, the bubble. Yeah. So that's an actual thing. Yeah, people do just by being good looking. I, do you find John Hamm incredibly good looking? I don't know. I don't know. I, I I see that people say that, but I don't get it personally. Yes, I think it's almost like, but he has fun with it. You know, he plays like characters that it's like humorous 
that they're so good looking or like people's reactions to them is funny. Yeah. I, and my favorite kind of role he's ever been in really is in a Black Mirror episode. Oh, yes. That was that a one. good one. Yeah. 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 That was messed up. Yeah. This is why yeah. this is why I think the show Upload wouldn't work. Like uploading your consciousness into an afterlife because people could take copies of your consciousness and do the crap they did to those copies in that Black Mirror episode or yeah. worse Black Mirror episodes. So maybe the digital afterlife is not such a great idea after all. Exactly. I agree. Height, because apparently that matters. Will I go ahead and blame social societal hangups about <laughs> gender and height on the patriarchy? <laughs> Of course. In the meantime, adding this to your bio is like taking a snitty little unneeded swipe at future matches who actually might not care how tall you are. Yeah, that does make you look like all cynical and bitter height, because apparently that matters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> except, except that it does for some women. It does. It does, but like... Must be six feet. It'd be like Maybe a woman shorter. showing a picture of herself and the caption is like, a picture of me, because apparently that matters. Yeah, it does. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, height. I think that you know, as as much as height matters, just you know, just if you put do what normal people do and just put the number and just mm -hmm. that's it. Be honest uh, about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, unless you <laughs> like to wear, unless you like to wear really like heels all the time, then, then yeah. I mean, if you're going to wear lifts for the most of the time, I guess you could put that height. Yeah, but don't. I mean, don't nice. be honest. You could say I'm five five, but I do wear lifts, so most of the time I'm going to be five eight. You can wear your heels, ladies. <laughs> I, like, I, I like that Sarah added the ladies. She knows. <laughs> she knows. I know that that is apparently an issue with high. Some girls, I guess, are like he needs to be three inches taller than me so I can wear my heels. Yeah. I don't wear heels, so you know, I don't need to be any taller. Yeah, well, yeah. I am far enough off the ground that I'm more further off the ground than I'm comfortable with already. I don't need to be even taller on heels. No. I Maybe mean, it's tough being eight foot five. I get you. Eight foot five? <laughs> <laughs> you just, you know, it just. <laughs> Yeah, you just you just put it out there for me to use as a joke. So I yeah. have to use it. I, you didn't. Just, yeah. I am only eight two. Come on. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I know. I gave you that. Those three extra inches. Yeah. People care. People care. <laughs> uh, that fluent sarcasm. That just means that uh, it says uh, it's quite possible that sarcasm has become shorthand for having a sense of humor. Ask yourself this though: What exactly is appealing about constantly saying things you don't mean, and in that tone? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, it just reminds me of the guy in the trench coat and the hat, you know, tipping it. <laughs> Milady. <laughs> Milady. I'm fluent in sarcasm. Yeah. Fluent sarcasm also means it allows you to be condescending. It, it, it's almost like an, it's almost like a, a get out of jail free card because you're saying, I'm going to be condescending and patronizing <gasps> every once in a while. You know what I hate? Like, right. I'm an asshole. That's just my personality. Or just get over oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the yeah, yeah. worst. <laughs> like you're just gonna have to deal with if you want to be with this handsome, sexy man. You're just gonna have to get over the fact that I'm an asshole because that's just the way I'm, baby. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, this one's a personal attack, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm bad at replying. Actually, that's an attack at Sarah. I don't put that in at all. <laughs> No, that's, no, that's like, just that's just an indictment oh, on both of us. Oh, yes, uh -huh. I'm a, yeah. Yeah, I am bad at replying. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. At, and I'm also <laughs> bad at replying, so... And I'm actually I'm better at replying, just, but, you know, I have to... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking for a partner in crime. I, I only, I'm only bringing this up because I've seen it. I've actually seen people say that, like... In profiles, I'm looking for a partner in crime. Uh, all right, that's. Uh, uh, How interesting is your life that it's like a life of crime? <laughs> I know, right? Like, how many cars are you stealing, and how many banks <laughs> are you robbing that you need yeah. someone? 
Um, and, but anyway, uh, what, what, anything else here that looks? Yes, uh, I love no, this one. Do it, do it. General references to having fun and laughing. <laughs> Well, let me tell you about the last few times I laughed because they were a good time and I had a lot of fun because I I like fun fun and laughing. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, oh, oh my Lord. And music. I love music and being happy. (laughs) The music thing makes sense if you're specific. Yeah. But if you're just saying, ah, you know what I love to do? I love to listen to music. Yeah, okay. So does everyone else. Like, yeah, we love, we all love music. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the people, t- profiles, okay. We, <laughs> we have, as a people, have become lazy. I'm, I'm okay to admit it. <laughs> I, we were a little bit lazy, right? If you've listened to the last few episodes of the show, you may have noticed, it's not as much editing in the shows as there used to be. <laughs> it's not that I've gotten lazy. I've just gotten busy. But that also means I'm lazy because I don't have the time to put in ever, all the work that I want to do to the show. Uh, it, it'll return after this week, luckily. Or when I get better, I'll be, doing, be able to do that. So whatever. But that's beside the point. We've gotten to the point where we're like, you know what I love? I love food. Mm. I'm a foodie. Okay. <laughs> like, what do I do with this information? Like, great. I like to eat. I, I, I also like to be alive by <laughs> eating. I like sitting and standing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I have many interests. <laughs> I, like to be, I, I like to be upright. I like to be horizontal and vertical every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> I like to sleep in a bed. <laughs> well, 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 okay, okay. That one, that one, I can get you because if they like to, if they, if they, if they, if they said something to the effect of, well, oh, thank God, I like to sleep in a coffin. Well, pff, no. Well, just... okay. If someone says I sleep in a coffin, that's another. This could be another big old eye roll from me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna be dating any vampires. No, no thanks. I do, but yeah, that's uh, that's that, that's I, I I love that. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, a couple more here, just because th- these are things you should not be doing. As you see, we are making fun of them. I'm gonna combine these two because they're from the same universe. But it says quotes way too much from The Office and looking for the gym to my Pam or Pam to my gym. We get it. You like <laughs> you like to every once in a while jump on to jump on to like a, a brick that's sticking out and then another brick that's sticking out and yelling out parkour, right? Like you like that stuff. You enjoy it. I get it. You like to put people's stuff into vending machines. Cool. Um, stop. Wait, what does the bricks thing mean? The well, I I'm just like he they they did an episode where they were jumping around the furniture and yelling out parkour. Oh. Parkour. I haven't seen Parkour. it in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you also like to replace yourself with your Asian friend and claim that you're them. Uh, Jim did that. He, oh, <laughs> God, you have a good memory. <laughs> he, replaced, uh, he replaced himself with uh, that guy from, oh, my God, I forget what shows he's on. But he, he just to, just to, you know, obviously, just to screw with, with Dwight. But I'm going to look it up. Yeah, look it up because he's a, he's actually a famous actor. Oh yeah, right? yeah. Uh, Asian shoot. Jim. What is his name? Randall Park. Randall Park. Yeah, Randall Park. Yeah. He's so funny. He is. Uh, I haven't seen him in anything lately. Not since um. Uh, yeah, not in a while. I, uh, I'd love to see him some in, uh, uh, do some more stuff. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I don't think I've seen him in a while either. But he always makes me chuckle. Yeah, he's he's a he's a good guy. He's funny. He's a but, funny yeah. actor. Yeah, and we know the ultimate. Apparently, why I don't. Okay, look, they had a good romance. Sure, are Jim and Pam like the ultimate romance? Like, are they the ultimate couple? I don't know. On TV, even like, ugh. yeah. Uh, I guess it was a very very popular show. Yeah, and they were the most 
popular will they won't they couple on the show. So that puts them pretty high up, I think. No, you're not wrong. But uh, I like I like that that's a thing because I know The Office is uh, – go Seinfeld. I, I, I prefer Seinfeld personally. <laughs> I just finished watching the entire series of Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. It's nice. on Netflix. And honestly, so much – I hadn't seen 99% of them since I was like oh, yeah. a little, little kid. Which, which, which was the one that stood out? That, that from your rewatch what was the one that 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 like oh yeah oh my gosh I'm trying to remember it's weird they all blur together now because for like the last few weeks I've just been watching like Seinfeld while I do like projects um, Master of My Domain um, uh, they're real and they're wonderful um, <laughs> I liked the uh, the Marble Rye the Marble uh, Rye yeah. I remembered the envelope one that like killed his fiance. Killed his fiance. Because when I was a kid, it terrified me. I was like, "You can die from licking envelopes." From the toxic adhesive, yeah. Apparently, well, I, <laughs> I can't imagine that's true. True, but yeah. Yeah, no, it was good. It's really good. Like, it's a really good background show for when you're like doing stuff that doesn't require you to like read or like listen to people talking to something else. And you'll notice how it influences, like, if you've only watched modern television and you go back to watch Seinfeld, you'll realize a lot of it is influenced by Seinfeld. Like, there's a lot of jokes that are kind of... And, like, 90% of their problems could be solved with cell phones. Well, well, that was (laughs) pre-cell phone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, the um, Kenny Roast... Kenny, Kenny Rogers... Kenny Rogers Roasters... Ah, Jerry, he's just, oh my God, uh, something I, I could, I, I love Seinfeld. It's a great show. Anyway, so they, yeah, uh, any other, anything else here um, before we wrap up that really kind of is a, is one of your very much no go. Hmm. See, the one that I'm just, I'm just going to say that I don't think is that bad isn't, oh no, never mind. I read it wrong. Um, uh, let's see. Is there anyone else, anything else here that really just I think is? I'm totally fun. guilty of the string of emoji. I don't understand <laughs> that. I I don't emoji very much either. Which oh my god, why. I emoji so much when I'm texting. I asked my boyfriend. I was like, "Do you emoji more in our text conversation than you do anyone else's?" And he was like, "Yes, I think I do," because <laughs> oh. he kind of like he kind of like mirrors the amount I do, and so. <laughs> I was like, do you emoji this much with like anybody else? He was like, no, no, I guess I don't. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I just, I can't do it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get emojis. I don't, so, I throw like oh. one or two, like every two or three messages. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's okay if you do it because that's your thing, you know. And then I send emoji. some that are like, just the one emoji is the message. So it's really big. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, that nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm like a facial expression kind of person, so I got to put the facial expressions into the conversation somehow. <laughs> well, yeah, because you hit the, with, the, with the string of emojis, I think the benefit to the emojis is that it tells you a better story than words can sometimes, in the sense of like you get to feel their expression, like an expression, like you understand where they're coming from, you understand what they're trying to say. So, like, if it's smiley or winky, at least you know they're being, you know, they're teasing you or they're having a little fun with you in in a profile. So I actually think emojis are pretty good. Um, plus, you know, you know what they want when you see uh, eggplant, Egg peach, witch. and then the, Cat. the squirting, and the squirting <laughs> water. Yeah. <laughs> cat and squirting water and like oh okay you know what they want <laughs> see emojis are good for everything I just can't believe I mean I guess that's the closest thing to phallic is the the um, uh, I guess it's called an aubergine in the in the UK um, but the eggplant so that well, makes sense yeah uh, but I'd never use the eggplant. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> no, that's never been uh, 
in your in your arsenal of emojis to your boyfriend. Like that is not an emotion I need to convey through emojis. <laughs> so you never put like uh, eggplant, pineapple. I don't know. Uh, I like steam- to keep things open to imagination. I just use the fire emoji. Steamship, right? <laughs> steamship. <laughs> <laughs> traffic, traffic light, traffic light. Um, I guess that's pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> traffic light, traffic light, upside down smiley face. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> you haven't lived until you've used those emojis. I'll tell you that now. Okay, upside down smiley face, when you can find an opportunity to use it, is pretty good. It is a fairly diverse emoji, and I can't believe we've gotten to this point. All right. You know what that means? It's time to wrap up. Thanks, everyone, for listening. You guys have been awesome. Uh, we're going to do bonus episodes again soon. So there's five already at the Patreon at patreon.com slash aka the other guy for just $1 a month, a buck a month. A, a, it's the cost of a, of a, a pack of, of spearmint gum or double mint gum, whatever gum you like to chew. <laughs> it's just one pack. For a buck a month. I'll bet it's like two sticks these days. <laughs> it's four. Maybe. Not the dollar pack. The dollar Not pack the dollar is pack, like two no. sticks. It's a, it's, a, it's a stick and a half. They broke half the stick. They're back in. They're like, no, no, no. We can't afford But it's a stick and a half for you. Uh, but check it out. For this dollar, you get to, you get you get more content like this. And we talk about weird stuff. We talk about funny things. We have so many different um we have five so far and it's just going to continue we're going to talk about weird and funny things after show so check it out uh if you want to write in please do your email is important to us is this love at gmail.com and we're really important i cannot stress this enough because you are our third chair you guys give us that i mean it seems like right cow left coast is but you are too <laughs> you're, 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 you are too. So go ahead and write in. Um, and you know what? I'm going to forego all the other ones just to say this. Go to your iTunes, your Apple podcast, your Spotify, your whatever. Just and rank us. Like us. Rank us. Give us five stars, especially on iTunes. Let, let people know that we exist. Show, uh, show the world that you like this show, that you think we're funny, even when we're sick. Or one of us is sick. I'm I'm the sick one. I mean, I've been sniffling. <laughs> you've been sniffling, but I think that just started. Near the yeah. End. So, uh, because this is way past your bedtime, so we're gonna get out. Uh, of here. Yeah, I get sniffly when I'm tired. Oh. <laughs> sad face emoji. Sad face emoji. Banana peel. Crying emoji. <laughs> Banana peel. Sleeping emoji. Water. Peach. 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 <laughs> I could eat peach for hours. All right. Good night, everyone. Go do those things for us. We love you. You love me. We are a happy family. Bye, everyone.